Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at income elasticity of demand in terms of the application of the angle curve. So here we have an illustration of the angle curve, and the angle curve is measuring income on the y-axis. So in these three graphs, graph A, B, and C, Instead of price, we're measuring income rising over time and the impact on the quantity of consumption of a particular type of good. So income in economics is represented by the symbol Y, and the formula for income elasticity of demand is the percent change in the quantity demanded over the percent change in income. And here we're going to uh, have income rise, and we're going to look at what's the impact on the quantity of consumption for in graph A, the market for cooking at home with low quality inputs or low quality ingredients. Perhaps you're using generic brand from the supermarket to satisfy your necessities of eating. Graph B, market for cooking at home with higher quality inputs or brand name ingredients. In graph C, the market for dining at restaurants. So we can see here that in graph A, while we're measuring income on the y-axis and the quantity of consumption on the x-axis, we're going to have incomes rise over time from y1 to y2. And as you earn more income, we would expect your quantity of consumption to fall for cooking at home with lower quality inputs, that you're going to reduce your consumption of generic brand ingredients from the supermarket. And the YED value should be less than zero. Obviously here we can see that we should be getting a negative value. So YED for goods that are necessities but inferior, and these are inferior goods, we should state that these are inferior goods, it will have a YED value less than zero. Essentially, you're going to have a negative value. So YED here is the percent change in the quantity demanded over the percent change in income. And we can see that income is rising, so we would get a positive value but the quantity of consumption is falling, so you'd get a negative value. A negative value divided by a positive will give you a negative number, essentially YED less than zero. So that signifies that it's an inferior good. All right, so that's important um, to understand. Now, let's say, just as an illustration, to illustrate the meaning of YED, let's say it's equal to negative 0.5. What that means is it's negative 0.5 over 1. So for every 1% increase in income, as incomes rise by 1%, we would expect a 0.5 decrease in the quantity of consumption, that they're moving in opposite directions. It is a negative causal relationship between the two. Your income continues to rise, let's say, from Y3 to Y4. And here we see your quantity of consumption increase from Q3 to Q4 along the angle curve from point C to point D. We notice here that we're going to get a positive value. All right. So the YED being equal to the percent change in the quantity of demand over the percent change in income, we're going to get two positive values. Quantity of consumption is increasing from Q3 to Q4, divided by an increasing income, so we're going to get a positive value. So when YED is greater than zero, we see that it is what we call a normal good. But in this case, for market for cooking for um, at home with higher quality inputs, this is going to be a necessity. So 
So you're switching from inferior goods to satisfy necessity needs to higher quality goods, normal goods uh, to satisfy those necessities. You're going from the lower quality generic brands to the uh, higher brand name uh, ingredients um, to cook at home. In addition, uh, for necessities, we notice that the YED value is between one and zero. We're going to get a value between zero and one. And that's to illustrate that the percent increase in income is greater than the percent increase in the quantity of consumption. Yes, you're making more money, but you're not going to increase your demand for necessities. You're not going to uh, fill up your entire house with food as you earn more income. You're going to just buy enough food to satisfy your need to eat and then use the rest of your disposable income on luxury goods. So here YED could be equal to 0 0.7, which means that for every 1% increase in income, we would expect a 0.7% increase in normal goods that are necessities. Again, we can highlight that the percent change in income is greater than the percent change in the quantity of consumption. You're earning more money and you're just going to buy enough to satisfy your needs, no more. The rest of your money will go towards the luxury goods, which is graph C, the market for dining at restaurants. Here we're going to see that the YED value is greater than one well, it's also greater than zero, I should say. It's going to be greater than zero, signifying that it's a normal good. But it's a luxury good. And a luxury good has a YED value that's greater than one. So it's a luxury good, which is also a normal good, under the category of normal good. And there we're going to notice that as your incomes rise from Y five to Y six, there's a dramatic increase in the amount of consumption from Q5 to Q6. So here we see that the percent change in income is less than the percent change in the quantity of consumption. Now you've satisfied all of your needs. Any additional income is just going to go to enjoying all of the luxuries that you don't actually need. Eating out at restaurants, going to the movies, and so forth. Buying more clothing than you actually need. Etc. So here we could have a YED value that let's say it's equal to 2.5, which means that for every 1% increase in income, there's a 2.5% increase in the quantity demanded of that particular luxury good. Okay, and again here we see that with luxury goods, it also is a positive value. The percent change of quantity demanded over percent change in income is equal to the quantity of consumption increasing, which is a positive number, divided by an increase in income, which is a positive number, which gives us a value greater than zero. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the angle curve. The angle curve for inferior goods would have a kind of downward sloping angle curve reflecting the negative relationship between income and the quantity of consumption. For normal goods that are necessities, it's upward sloping, illustrating the positive relationship between income and the quantity of consumption. But we see that if it's a necessity, the percent change in income is greater than the percent change in the quantity of demand. It's just uh, buying enough goods to satisfy your necessities and no more. And we see with normal goods, there's the positive causal relationship between income and the quantity of consumption but there's vastly more consumption with any slight change in income. These are uh, individuals enjoying luxury goods. Okay, and then vice versa. If where incomes were to fall, there would be a dramatic decrease in the quantity of consumption. If incomes were to fall, there would be a reduction in the consumption of normal goods or necessities. And if incomes were falling, there would be an increase in the demand, the quantity of demand for the inferior good. All right, and that's it. So if you have any questions, you can comment those questions below. And don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.